How's it going, YouTube? Right, we're back on the camper again today. Um, I'm actually in the camper because it's raining outside. Um, I need it not to be raining to do this job we're doing today, so hopefully it'll stop later. But for the first part of this video, we're all right inside. Right, so we've got a bit of a job on today uh, that I've actually been after doing for quite a long time on the Volkswagen. Um, I've never really got round to it, but we definitely are doing it on this Boxer build. Uh, we need to be doing it especially because I want permanent connectivity on this van to the internet one for the victron system uh, so we can log in and see what it's doing two for the security because i'm going to fit an mdvr system and have cameras all around it so we can see what's going on and what i want it to be able to do is any videos or anything it takes i need it to upload it straight away to the cloud uh, so if for any reason the van does get broken into or stolen or anything like that uh, then at least we've got videos uploaded to the cloud so i want permanent internet connectivity on this van uh, the victron has also got uh, a gps module on it uh, that i've added we'll have a look at that one day uh, and what that does is that allows me to geofence the van uh, so we can mark on a map a geofence and if the van goes out of that geofenced area um, what it'll do is it'll let me know uh, and then it can be used as a tracker system so once again for that we need permanent internet connectivity so that comes to what we're doing today what i want to do today is we're going to fit a 4g wi-fi system to this van we've got some other advantages that comes with that as well the reasons why i was wanting to fit it to the volkswagen is what i found in the volkswagen is there's many times uh, when we're a bit out in the sticks uh, and when you're using your phone as a hotspot it's perfectly fine uh, but because you're inside a big metal box uh, what that does is it acts as a bit of a Faraday cage and the signal that you're getting from this phone is not as good as what it should be so you could be in an area which kind of has got internet but if it's a weak signal once you're inside the van uh, you won't be able to pick up that signal at all so what I was wanting to do in the Volkswagen uh, uh, which I've never got round to yet, is fit Wi-Fi in the van with an external antenna uh, to give us the best possible chance of getting a signal when we're in a low signal area. I don't need super raging fast internet because literally all I'm doing is I'm out in the van, I need some connectivity for what we've just mentioned, and also if I'm watching any YouTube videos, Netflix or anything like that, I need connectivity for that. So I don't need it to be absolutely super lightning speed because obviously there's some really good options out there like your Starlink and stuff like that uh, but for the amount of money it costs for the monthly subscription and things like that it's really not worth it for me if I was living and working in the van remotely uh, then it'd probably be different uh, but for the usage that I want this for we don't need Starlink or anything like that we can use a normal 4G connection and as long as we get in a good signal it's good enough for me uh, so in this box we've got a little bit of stuff uh, Kuma has very kindly sent me their connect light uh, 4g router kit as part of this kit there's a few different options you can get for antennas uh, i've got this puck one uh, which needs to be fitted on the outside of the van obviously to fit this on the outside of the van we need to be drilling holes through the roof and things like that uh, we'll do that later when we come to fit it when this rain stops uh, because this one gives us the best possible chance of a signal when we're not likely to get a signal with a normal phone inside the van. Also, as part of the kit, uh, we get this little SIM card here. Uh, apparently, this is a multi-network SIM card designed for the outdoor explorers. Uh, so this should jump between networks uh, for whoever gives us the strongest signal. This phone here, which I normally use for my hotspot, uh, this is on EE. EE is not the cheapest, but generally it's normally the strongest signal anywhere, so, which is a reason why I normally stay on EE. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to try this. Uh, once we've got it fitted, uh, we're going to do some speed tests and things like that. I'm literally, I'm only outside the house at the minute. Um, it's not the best signal around here, so it probably is a good place to try it. Uh, so we'll run some speed tests. Uh, I've got another phone, so I can connect to it via hotspot with this one. Uh, and then we'll run some speed tests and we can do some comparisons or connecting to hotspot between this one and connecting to the Wi-Fi and things like that. So we'll see how it works once it's fitted. So whilst we're waiting for this rain to stop, I think what we'll do is let's go in the house. I'm going to do my usual unboxing thing. Uh, we'll get this down on the bench, get the antenna down on the bench. Uh, let's have a look through it, uh, talk about what we get in the box. Let's go and have a look. Right, so here it is, the Kuma Connect Lite 4G router kit. Uh, the thing about Kuma that people might not know um, is Kuma is a UK-based company. 
Uh, so if you want to phone them for any support or anything like that, uh, you're actually phoning a UK phone number. And buying anything from these guys, you know you're supporting a UK company. Me being from the UK, um, this is always good for me to keep things local. Uh, this device you can either buy on its own uh, or, or you can buy as part of a kit with an antenna. Uh, there's a few different options of antenna uh, that you can get with this on the site. One of them being their own antennas that is part of this kit. Um, we'll have a look at that when we unbox it. Uh, the other ones being uh, separate antennas to this router. This particular one is an external one. And there's another option called Kuma Play, uh, which is like an internal antenna, which you can stick to your windscreen and things like that. But we've gone for the external one, so that's what we're gonna look at. So if we open up this box, let's have a look what you get in it. Right, so opening up the box, first thing we see is some instructions uh, telling us how to set up the device. I'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, next thing down is the router itself. We'll have a look at that in a second. And then what else have we got in this box? Four antennas on SMA connectors. Uh, we've got two for the LTE, for the 4G, and two for the Wi-Fi. You can see there it says on them, that one says Wi-Fi, uh, and that one says LTE. So we need to make sure we get the right ones because we are going to be using uh, the Wi-Fi ones in our build, uh, but the LTE ones we're going to be replacing with our external antenna. Uh, but if you don't want to use an external antenna, uh, this is one of your options for antennas, using the LTE ones uh, connected to this router. Uh, the next thing in the box is we get one of these little SIM card adapter things. Uh, so depending on whichever size SIM card you want to put in it, uh, we've got the little adapters and one of those little key things that you get, uh, same as like you get in the iPhones, uh, our SIM card goes in that slot there. So we can use the adapters uh, to get the SIM card to the right size to fit in there. And lastly in the box, uh, we've got two sources of power. One of the things you can see straight away with this being uh, a UK device is we've got a UK plug. We've not got those little clip-on adapters and things like that. We have got a proper UK plug. So if we're wanting to use this for 240 volts, so if you're wanting to use this in your home, for example, uh, you can plug straight into your mains power there with this 240 volt adapter. Uh, the other adapter is your car adapter. So that gives us the power we need uh, to run this from the vehicle. I'm imagining this is quite sensitive to actually receiving 12 volts. Uh, in our camper, we've got lithium batteries, and as we know, lithium batteries can be anywhere uh, between 12 and a half volts and 14.7, I think it is. So we need to keep a nice stable output of 12 volts to this device. Uh, you can use voltage regulators and things like that, uh, but to be honest, we get one in the box which is this. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I've bought a little adapter off of Amazon, this one. I'll put some links down in the description to, to where you can get this as well. Uh, and what this allows us to do is I've got some power up in the cupboard where we're gonna fit this. So this will be off of our leisure battery and then it gives us a nice socket there that we can plug this in uh, and then this will give us a regulated 12 volts out to this device. Uh, the device itself, uh, super straightforward, you can see it's quite small. Uh, so looking at the top, we've got the SMA connectors there for the Wi-Fi antennas, we'll stick those on. Uh, these literally just uh, screw on. Uh, and then what we can do is depending on how we mount this thing, uh, we can angle these out uh, to however we want them. Uh, on the bottom, uh, we've got the same thing again for the uh, LTE connections. You could use these antennas if you want in the simplicity of just using this device on its own as a standalone system. Uh, but like I said, we're using the external antenna, so I won't fit those on. But these are an option uh, if you're wanting to use this as a standalone system. On the bottom, uh, we've got power there. Uh, we've got a couple of RJ45 connections there. So if we're wanting to hardwire in rather than Wi-Fi for our network, we can do that. And on the front, we've got all the lights there to tell us our activity. Uh, the box itself uh, is a nice metal case. It feels kind of nice. Uh, and we've got a little sticker there that shows if this light doesn't go green, uh, we've got support there, which as I said, is a UK support number. Uh, and we've got a little QR code there, which will take us to the help. Uh, so you always know you've got a bit of support there if you're not getting the connectivity. Right, so joining to this, uh, we'll be using our external punk antenna, uh, this one. So let's have a look at this. Uh, opening up the box, we have literally got the little antenna uh, inside here. Instructions, uh, two separate cables coming down which we need to run through the roof. Um, how you probably would normally do this 
uh, is drill a hole through your roof uh, with this, then this would sit flush to your roof. Uh, this is like a 3M sticker. Uh, this would sit flush to your roof and the cables would come through. Uh, we're not going to do it like that because my roof uh, and all the insulation and everything is really thick. Uh, so what I'm going to do is off my roof rack, I'm going to make a little bracket to mount this on. So this will come off the roof rack like that. Uh, these cables will come out and then we'll take these cables uh, through a cable gland kit. Looking out the window, the rain seems to have settled down a bit. So I think what we're going to do now is let's go out to the vehicle. Uh, let's get this on the roof. Uh, we'll get the wires through into the top cupboard. Uh, and then we'll have a look where we're going to fit this. And let's get it all powered up. So I'll see you in a second outside. Right, rain stopped. Sun's come out a little bit. Let's get this thing installed, shall we? Right, completely ignore what you're seeing here because I'm halfway through doing a top cupboard video. Um, I'm doing all the top cupboards now. I've done that one. Pretend you've not seen this one and wait for the cupboard video. Uh, but I wanted to get this one installed so we can fit this wi-fi on the other side i've got the solar coming through so it's going to be the same as that for the antenna so what it's going to do is if i open this cupboard and have a look inside right at the top the antenna cable is going to come through there um, i've got to line the inside of these cupboards yet with uh, some boards with the leverette on to cover all this stuff up at the back so what i'm going to do is at the top of the cupboard there uh, i'm going to screw that on and then that's going to be behind a panel so we won't even see it i don't particularly need the wi-fi aerials to be out uh, because i only want the wi-fi to cover the inside of the van anyway it's not going to really cover much more than that and i'm sure in that top cupboard it'll be perfectly strong enough to cover all this van fine if i wanted a better coverage uh, what i'd do is mount it on the outside of this cupboard there so if it ever turns out that i do want better coverage there's going to be plenty of wire inside so i can reroute it and i can mount it on the outside there but for now i didn't really want it showing but the first job is the antenna right so what i've done with this antenna is i've got one of those uh, little gland things there so we can drill a hole through the roof and feed the wires down and then seal that down to the roof the antenna itself i've put on this little angle bracket like that uh, so i can use these tech screws here and we can screw that to the roof rack just like that right so up on the roof uh, you can see the one at the other side that's where the solar's going through so this one i'm going to fit just here at like literally the opposite side exactly the same uh, we want the gland towards the back of the van so when it's driving down the road the wind's pushing over and it's not forcing things through this gland here uh, the antenna itself like i said i'm going to use those tech screws and i'm going to fasten it there like that on the side of this uh, roof rack right so i'm going to get this installed i'll get the wires through the roof and then let's have a look at this again Right, so that's the antenna done. Like I said, this puck is fastened to the uh, roof rack. Uh, and then going round and then through this gland, I'll leave that to go off. Uh, the wires are going inside the vehicle. So that's the outside of it done. Right, so inside I've got my antenna cables coming through there. Um, I had a power cable coming across there that I put in specifically for the Wi-Fi and the uh, camera system. Uh, what I've done is I've wired that up to that 12 volt socket. Uh, so what I can do is I can plug this 12 volt uh, adapter into it uh, and then we'll have a regulated 12 volt coming out there, like I said. And then what I'll do is I'll stuff it in there uh, because later on we've got to fill all this up with insulation anyway, all the way down the vehicle. Uh, so nothing will rattle once it's inside there anyway. Uh, and then, like I said, I've got to screw this up to the top, uh, plug in the power, uh, plug in these aerial connectors and then it'll be ready to power up. So I'll see you back in a second uh, when this is all powered up and switched on. Uh, before you actually screw this up, on the back of this, it's got a sticker uh, that's got all your information, like your SSID and your password and all that for your Wi-Fi. So make sure you take a photo or take a note of that before you put it up because it's on the back of this. Uh, right, so I'll see you in a second when all this is up. I've done, like I said, I've screwed it to the top of the cupboard. Um, I've stuffed all the wires tidy behind uh, because 
to be honest, once this is all done and I've lined the back of these cupboards, you'll not be able to see any of this anyway. This is this will all be hidden. Uh, as you can probably see, uh, we've got all the blue lights on that we're supposed to have on, so this is all working. Uh, so let's connect to it. Let's do some speed testing. Uh, let's see what it's like. Right, time for a bit of speed testing. Right, to keep it fair, what I've done is out of my iPhone, I've taken the e SIM card out and I've put it over here in this phone look. Uh, so I've got a Google Pixel here. Uh, what I've done is I've put my EE card in there. So what I'll do is I'll connect to that via hotspot on this phone here. Um, I'll screen record this so we can do the speed testing on this, but this will be connected via uh, this is hotspot. And then I'll take that SIM card out. Um, I'll put it in the Kuma uh, and then we'll connect to that and do the same thing again. All right, so as you can see, we've got E connected there, and over there it says 4G look. Um, I've got hotspot turned on, so I'll connect to the hotspot. Right, let's throw it over here so we've got something to look at while we look at the screen recording. Right, so as you can see, uh, I've got all the doors and windows shut and everything, so we're inside a metal box with this. So if I start this screen recording on this phone, so if I go to Wi-Fi, uh, you can see there, look, um, I'm on Pixel Wi-Fi there. Right, so if I find speed test, we've got it there, look. I'll start that, which says we're connected to the internet. Um, if I, I don't know why it says connected to BT, but it does. Well, I'll just leave that in all automatic. Uh, let's click go. As we can see, we're connecting. Uh, once again, this is on the Google Pixel. Uh, so we'll do a few just to make sure. Download speed at that is looking about 15. It's going up all the time, actually. Uh, download 17.3. As you can see, the upload speed is also building slowly as well. We'll do a couple of times just to make sure. Uh, 3.41 upload. Uh, so let's go again. We'll do exactly the same test again without doing anything else. This one's going a bit faster. We've got 24.3 out of it that time. Uh, upload speed is still pretty abysmal. If you're uploading to YouTube or anything like that, you, you want about 10 megabit per second, really, to get any sort of decent upload out of it. Let's do one more. Uh, so we're running again. Upload speed again, pretty abysmal. Uh, right, so as you can see, it was 17.4. So the first one, I think, was 17.2. Then we had a 24 point something and a 17.4. I just want to try one more just to see that 24 was a bit of a fluke one. 12.9 that time. It's super random up and down. So a 17, a 24, a 17 and a 12.9. So it is really random up and down. Uh, the uploads have been consistently pretty bad at all around 2 megabit per second. Uh, right, so what we'll do now is if I stop this screen recording, is if I take this SIM card out and I'll put it in the Kuma up there, and then let's connect to that and do it again. Uh, and just to show you why we used my EE card, uh, the one that came with the Kuma, uh, that doesn't work in a phone, that only works in the router itself. I tried it in a phone and it wouldn't get a signal at all. Uh, I wanted something that we can use to compare. Uh, this one, I've took the EE card back out, look. Um, I've put the uh, Labara card back in that this had originally. Uh, and if we look here, look, it says right at the top, look, emergency calls only, Labara. Uh, Labara kind of jumps around as well between a, a few different providers. And as you can see in the van here, this has not got a signal at all. So I couldn't use that card. I, that's why I had to use EE, uh, because EE is a much stronger signal. Uh, and I, literally where I live, EE is about the only one that can really get a signal. Right, so that's got the SIM card in. Uh, let me shut that down because that's exactly how it would be under normal use. Uh, and let's do a bit of a screen record again and do some speed tests. Uh, once again, we'll record the screen. Uh, I'm just doing it in front of it so I can match it up. Right, so if I go to Wi-Fi... Uh, we'll change there from the Pixel uh, to the LTE Wi-Fi. That's the Kuma router. Uh, there we are, where we're connected to it now. Uh, this phone has not got a SIM card in it, so the only, the only internet we get in is from the router itself. So if we go back to speed test, let's do this again. Let's do four tests the same. Uh, once again, it says I'm connecting to BT. I don't know why, but it does. First initial test is looking pretty similar to what we was getting on the phone. Coming in about 17 megabits per second, 17.5. Pretty similar to what we was getting on the phone. Upload speed is significantly better though. Nine megabits per second. 
So we've got a 17.5 download and a 9.3 upload. So let's go again for a second one. Building up a bit slower this time. And we're not reaching as high this time. 11.4, so we're down a little bit that time on the download speed. Upload speed as well is down a little bit, but it's still over double of what it was on the uh, Pixel. 11.4, 6.7, let's do another one. Right, so third test, we've got a 13.4 download. And it's looking like a, a nine point something upload when that finishes, 9.58. And the fourth one's come in 13.8 uh, download and an 8.61 upload. Uh, so it's looking like the download speed average uh, is lower on the Kuma, uh, but the upload speed is over double, to be honest. So it's a lot better for uploads. So things like using the security camera and things like that, um, it's gonna be a lot better for when I'm viewing it remotely. So I think what we should do now is I'm gonna take that E card out there i'm going to put it directly in this iphone and run a direct off of this phone speed test because uh, this will connect on 5g and everything else so let's see what it's like inside the van uh, directly on this phone uh, right so if the ee card's back in here so if i record this screen uh, let's do a speed test straight on this this is an iphone 16 pro right so the first thing to do let's literally just turn the wi-fi off so we've got no wi-fi at all uh, as you can see there in the top right hand corner we're on 5g Right, so let me go to speed test. Uh, that's our last test on the Kuma. Uh, let's come back out of that. Uh, now it says EE, so uh, 5G connection on EE is quite a good connection around me, so this will probably be quite significantly better. So let's go. So inside the van, uh, we're up at 11 12 we're going up a little bit more 15.8 download speed and the upload speed is coming in pretty low as well actually uh, 5.1 upload so we've got a 15.8 download and a 5.1 upload and this is on 5g on the iphone so let's go again for a second test 8.42 download and a 3.0 upload so as you can see the 4g connection is quite a lot better than the 5G. 4G, and the reason why the Kuma uses the 4G, is the penetration is better. The speeds are slower, but the penetration is better, uh, which what we can see now. Let's do one more test, actually, with this. Let's go outside. Right, so if we stand outside now, and let's do a test outside to see if that's any better. As you can see there, outside we've got a much better connection. So that is literally just what you get from being inside the van, which shows you the significance of needing an antenna outside of the van. Here we are, here's another one, second test outside. Uh, straight away, there you are, look. We've got a better signal, we're up to three bars now actually on the signal, uh, and we've got 60 megabits per second. So that just shows you what happens uh, from sitting inside a metal box so the significance of having an antenna outside the outside the van is quite high right so there you have the kuma connect light uh, with the pro antenna uh, obviously as we saw uh, when i was outside with the iphone on a 5g we was getting a significantly faster uh, signal uh, this kuma system is designed to be a consistent signal uh, when we're away from the towns and we're a bit more out in the sticks. Uh, right, so I'll put some links down below where you can check this out for yourself. If I've got any discount codes or anything like that, um, I'll stick those in the description as well. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see the rest of this build and how we're going on. Uh, like those cupboards that you've just seen, and that's probably going to be the next video on the camper, maybe. Or this Laguna table leg that I've fitted down here. We've got lots of other stuff happening on the channel as well, because I do like to mix it up a little bit. Uh, because it keeps me interested. If I'm just doing the same thing over and over again constantly, it does get a bit boring for me making these videos. So I do kind of like mix it up a little bit between the camper. Uh, we've got some e-bikes and stuff like that going on. Car stereo systems, uh, tech tools, that sort of thing, because I'm an engineer by trade, so all these techy tooly kind of things I, I do really like. Uh, so we do have kind of a bit of a random video mixture. Uh, so subscribe if you want to see all that sort of stuff. Uh, comment below anything you want to say. I do like reading all your comments. Uh, like the video if you liked it, and I'll catch you guys in another video. Cheers.